Audi. So this is a feedback video from a conversation, a brief one that I had with David Berninger about a metaphor that he came across as it relates to us as the church, the body of Christ here present on earth, rooted in whatever respective communities that we may find ourselves in. Now, uh, the reason why I decided to make a video about this is because while we're talking about Romans 13, 1 through 7, and really what it means to submit to the governing authorities, as the text says, uh, I had also mentioned in video 3 a uh, really helpful principle from R.C. Sproul, which was to say, like, um, Romans 13, 1 through 7, submit, we, so we should submit to civil magistrates, submit to governing authorities, and that's like one path. But then there's this parallel path, which is almost superseding, that goes over top of it as we're in submission, which is to say that we should always obey God. So we can very easily go from this, but then we need to really look at it from this. So it's a different sort of dimension of perspective. And in that dimension of perspective, as we're obedient to God and we're trying and we should try to be obedient to the civil magistrates submit to governing authorities we're going this way and but this obedience to God is easily going to rub up and meet against this and if there's an imbalance where it's reversed it can become um, destructive to us and to our faith to our, our communities and at the same time, if we're like, well, I'm just going to obey God, and then we're in direct rebellion to the civil magistrates or the governing authorities, then that's a problem too, and bottom falls out. Um, so I thought it was really helpful to talk about as exiles, so that's First Peter language, as exiles, as sojourners, uh, a, what, are, what can our posture be in this in terms of obedience? So the last feedback video I talked about evil and like how we push back but like what does it even mean to be the people of God rooted into the places that God has us um, and so so this was the conversation that David and I was, and I was ha and, and I were having as it related to a metaphor and it was a metaphor that he came across um, from the gospel coalition co coalition can't speak today the gospel coalition their blog um, and it was something that was posted on July 4th, and it was, Does American Patriotism Have Place in Worship Services? Now, I am not going to talk at all about what the author Joe Carter says as it relates to American patriotism having a place in worship services. I bring it up because this is where the metaphor was couched in that David and I was, were talking about. Uh, so let me quote from the, uh, the, the article itself. The Bible uses many metaphors to describe the church, such as family, a household, a temple. But when thinking about the church as an institution, and I'm emphasizing that word, as a, excuse me, as an institution, it's helpful to think of it as an embassy. Uh, still quoting, a local church is not the kingdom, for the kingdom of God is not of this world. That's from John 18.36. Rather, the local church is an outpost of the kingdom, or what we could call an embassy. An embassy is an institution that represents one nation in another nation. As pastor theologian Jonathan Lehman says, an embassy declares its home nation's interest in the host nation, and it protects the citizens of the home nation living in the host nation. A local church is a real-life embassy set in the present that represents Christ's future kingdom and his coming universal church. So that's the metaphor, uh, is this idea of an embassy. So. The church as an institution, um, being an embassy, so we are citizens of the kingdom of God, our gathering of worship uh, is some form of a, an institutional structure, and as it's related to, in terms of the government and society and culture, looking to us, the institution, so that's where I'm talking about institution, and maybe one of the closest pictures that we can have uh, as it relates to governing structures in this context, Romans 13, would be something like an embassy. And, and an embassy, again, is, as defined by the author, an institution that re represents one nation and another. Uh, it declares, quote again, 
its home nation's interest in the host nation, and it protects the citizens of the home nation living in the host nation. So I think that that is a really interesting metaphor, and one that is certainly worth uh, unpacking beyond just this video. Uh, as far, again, as it relates to the article itself, I'm not going to go into anything as it relates to American patriotism, but I strongly suggest that you read the article just so you can have a context of the whole metaphor and what's being said, because I think that's in and of itself very interesting, but not in the direction or vein of Romans 13, 1 through 7, um, but still a worthwhile and valuable conversation to be had. And I would love to hear your thoughts. Now, as it relates to the metaphor, so when we're talking about the obedience to God and then our, uh, um, that we should obey civil magistrates or we should be subject to um, governing authorities, right? So like that parallel lane is this idea of embassy. Um, now, where I think it, it's helpful is, is that we have to have some sense of what it means to be exiles that are rooted in a community and because we gather as a church um, not only are we f formed as something structurally but then the community around us whether local community or national scale state scale whatever it be they have some sense of how they relate to that and it's really i think not through an organic perspective it's really through a structured institutionalized perspective and so I, I do think that that's where uh, an embassy metaphor is helpful because I think for outsiders looking in, it really fits. So what I, what I mean by outsider is maybe those not a part of the body of Christ because they're not Christians or those that are really not a part of any form of church as it means like a gathered community of worshipers around Jesus Christ. So when we're saying outsiders, I think it's really helpful maybe to say, yeah, it makes sense when the author says, uh, declares its home nation's interest in the host nation. I could see an outsider looking and saying, okay, we are the host nation, um, but, but you are representing your home nation, which is the kingdom of God. Where it gets a little wonky for me is that when you start looking at statements like from Jesus uh, when he talks about the kingdom of God is like Matthew 19 uh, 28 let me read it just to put it in context Jesus said to them truly I tell you at the renewal of all things when the son of man sits on his glorious throne you have who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel um, what I want to focus on is the renewal of all things, which is also Revelation 21 and 22 language. And, um, while outsiders, and I hate using th that term, those that maybe aren't set within the context of a Christian gathered community that we would call the body of Christ, the church, the bride, right? Um, is, is that it can very much feel like in opposition or at, at odds for one another, another, especially as it relates to certain things. But what scripture talks about is the idea of there being a renewal of all things. And so it sort of deconstructs the idea of um, host and home. Is that Revelation 21 22 actually talks about things being brought to the earth and that all things are being reformed, remade, renewed? Um, certainly, there are far better theologians that write about this. Um, and one of them that comes to mind is N.T. Wright. But, uh, but there is a sense that there is a deconstruction of home and host. And it's like, how can we join with Christ? Because he is renewing all things and we're waiting for the ultimate, the term is eschaton, like the ultimate renewal of all of these things. Uh, but as we wait, we can also see this picture of Christ restoring and renewing currently. And how do we join him in the midst of that, which is really that whole 
terminology of as we go make disciples. So as we're living our lives, we should be making disciples, which is really another way of saying joining in in the renewal of all things. Scripture talks about um, the groaning of creation. Um, I, I was reading something that John Eldridge was putting for, for a book, and he was really emphasizing this idea um, of, uh, of God being about the renewal of all things. Um, and so if that's the case, I just, I struggle with the idea of embassy because I think it, um, host and home, while I like it, I kind of lean more towards a picture of, of what Jeremiah is saying to those that are in exile. Let me um, read this a little bit more to give it context. This is from Jeremiah 29. Uh, starting in verse 5. So um, the Lord, verse 4 says, The Lord of heavenly forces, the God of Israel, proclaims to all the exiles have carried off from Jerusalem to Babylon. So here's just an example of God's people being in exile in a land that's not even their own. And verse 5 says, Build houses and settle down. Cultivate gardens and eat what they produce. Get married and have children. Then help your sons find wives and your daughters find husbands in order that they too may have children. Increase in number there so that you don't dwindle away. Promote the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because your future depend on, depends on its welfare. So it's not like, to be clear, it's not that I'm in opposition to the metaphor of embassy. I think that it's really helpful. But like one of the things I was processing with David and still needs to be teased out is embassies do have walls. And um, so, and I think there is a sense of protection even within the body of Christ. But what we do see in scripture is that we have this Messiah that came to the earth and wherever he went, he said, this is the kingdom of God has drawn near to you. And, and now as the members of the body of Christ, um, we get to say like the kingdom of God, not us, but like Christ in us, the kingdom of God has come near to these people. Like we are just joining in in the work that God's already doing. So if we're going to talk about something that's more like structured, that looks more like a watering hole or a equipping center or a place of healing it because it really is wherever we gather and then we're going about our worship and going about the making of disciples is that and the kingdom of God is is flourishing. It's like um, the world meeting up to God's goodness. And so um, maybe I'm just being too linear in my thinking about embassies, but even when I read Jeremiah 29, uh, it really talks about rootedness uh, as exiles and really being about the welfare. And it's just an image of renewal rather than the promotion or declaration of one's interests. And I think um, where we can often get in trouble, like in terms of being involved with, with, with what is going on in the world around us, is that we can be talking and advocating for our interests rather than the renewal of the city or the welfare of the city. Um, and I'm not saying that it's an either or, I'm just saying that it's very interesting to me, for example, that Jeremiah talks, go instead of using an embassy sort of picture or language, God invites the Israelites in exile to make their home. Um, and so I'm still wrestling with that, but I think that when we start putting that then in the context, right? So like obedience to God and then um submission to governing authorities it's it's like i'm if i'm going to submit to governing authorities i'm going to be putting it through the filter of what it means to live holy and rootedly <laughs> new word uh in into the place that god has put me as a, a missionary um so yeah still wrestling through that one i would love your thoughts but and i look forward to hearing them